down, Sadie. What are the signs of an attack? The energy. That if it's an energy attack, you feel a negativity. Your, your force of energy is a field of energy that you're familiar with. Anything of a higher vibration comes to you, you feel ecstatic. So if you go somewhere and the energy is very strong and positive, you become ecstatic means you… if you're feeling energies. You feel that energy like a drunken state, you feel a euphoria because they're a higher frequency, you're feeling the higher frequency and you're enjoying that. So that's a state that's positive. Now you have your energy state and you go somewhere negative. So you walk through the mall, go to a location and you continuously feel like a charge, very negative charge like somebody took a, a wire and keeps tapping it to you. So it's not something you will mistake. You, you feel a zzz, zzz, like somebody hitting you with a, 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 a live wire, your feet, your legs, your back because the energy that's trying to come towards you is of a much lower frequency and as a result they're going through your energy field zzz, and having a difficulty coming in. So they're trying to penetrate an energy field of a positive energy person, they're going to feel the vibration zzz, trying to push that vibration out because your positive energy is pushing that out. That's relative to energies. When the person is already at a negative, they don't feel anything, they don't understand how much negative is entering them but you see the signs of it with these words. That's why this teaching is like med school because people want to pretend like they're a doctor but they never went to med school so they can't diagnose anything and they definitely don't even understand themselves. When you begin to curse means the negative energy is too much in you and as a result you're feeding your negative ability and the demon next to you is being fed by your negative. So when the person becomes too overwhelmed with negativity, what happens? You begin to see the negative characteristics. Their practices were not strong enough to push away the negativity, they actually became possessed. And as a result of becoming possessed by the negative energy, they become influenced by it, they talk like it, they begin to act like it, then they begin to eat like it. You know they want the lesser food. When Allah offered what was from the heavens, they said, we want from what's within the dirt. So it's symbolic of they begin to go towards the lower characteristics. Possession, outright possession is something completely different, you don't even have to question that. Somebody possessed knows it, they're completely under attack, they have rips and scars and, and there is something horrific. As Salaamu Alaikum Ya Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Rahmatullah Sayyidi as time gets closer to the end, do spiritual openings happen at a faster rate? Does the power of the madad increase? Forgive me Ya Sayyidi for my shortcomings. Sure, inshaAllah. Inshallah the, 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 the power is definitely increasing, that's why the permission for the talks and the teachings are not at a normal level. Everything is coming out much more expedited, coming out much more faster. A student who sits to practice is going to experience a lot more energy. Student who sits and doesn't practice will also experience a lot of negative energies that they begin to understand there's no more time, there's so much negativity around that either they get on board or they go with the flow and the flow takes them towards the negativity. So it means you see it, you see like the wars open up, death opens up, difficulties everywhere, every type of calamity begins to come. So these are going to motivate people to quickly build themselves or they sort of put up a sail and they flow with that negativity. As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah Thank you for this teaching. How to train our hearing to protect ourselves from the negative energy knowing we are exposed to it from work, outside and everywhere. Please forgive me. 
Yeah, I think this the strongest is the meditation. That, that's why the meditation opens all these realities. That when you, when you become sensitive to meditation, sensitive to energy, you just practice a little bit connecting, of course then you become more attuned to everything. You become attuned to, why did I get mad? Why, why was I just yelling? At the end of the night, no matter how angry, whatever you fought, whatever you did, sit and meditate. If you agree that you're not possessed and you're not a demon, sit and meditate and say, why did I do that? Why, why am I overcome by energy? Why am I overcome by anger? What's, what's happening? As soon as somebody sits to contemplate, they become aware of who they are and why? Why is this energy affecting me? Did I, did I try to meditate? Did I wash? Did I shower? Did I make wudu as soon as I got angry to off these devils? But people get too wrapped up in the incident thinking, no, 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 have a just cause, look we're arguing about this issue. But to Allah none of these issues mean anything, it just means you're, you're losing and you forgot about the fight because shaitan will come with every type of issue under the sun, it doesn't matter for shaitan. Every single issue he'll rise up something and that for us then is an ability to purify ourselves. When shaitan hits it's an ability to purify yourself, to stop, make your wudu, contemplate and figure out what button is he pushing. And if my practices are strong and positive, how to control it and bring it back down to something positive. And when you can't control it, you have to stop and go wash to take the satanic energy away. So that's all by contemplation. So someone who's not contemplating, they're not going to go think to wash, they're not going to sit and say, okay, what did I do wrong? That's the whole danger. So it's not about, oh, and then feeling good, it's about stopping thinking, what did I do wrong? What am I doing wrong? How come I'm not picking up the, the negative energy? How come it, it came to me too quickly? So then they wash, they sit, they contemplate, they pray, they cry, they ask for Allah's forgiveness. All of those that they did wrong, that's all that's important to Allah So don't worry about the other person, it's how you reacted that was important. The incident means nothing to Allah but your reaction is everything to Allah So to control the reaction then we get to contemplate and understand the energy, then we begin to, to figure out all of these variables, that's why it's like med school. They go on the bed and they say, what's wrong with this person? Then they say, I don't know, check his temperature, what are his vital signs, what's wrong with his eyes, what's wrong with his lips. You look at the entirety of the patient then you can give a diagnosis. But if you don't look at anything and say, I don't know, but then that's not a patient of the way, that's not a student of the way. The student of the way has to observe everything. Then I've realized, oh my god, why was it just cursing? There must be a negative energy all around me and feeding on that cursing. And why am I listening to these cursings? Because I'm going to start to, to curse back. Why am I getting angry so quick? And then I have to go make my wudu, I have to sit, I have to contemplate. And you begin to look at all of the variables of your sickness so that you can understand the diagnosis of yourself. And that's what the meditation and the connections with the shaykh begin to inspire the student. Stop and listen to yourself, listen to what you've done, listen to what you're saying so that you can understand your state. If not negativity is coming so bad and so fast that people will be lost with it. They'll lose, they'll get rage, they'll get angry and they burn their connection with Allah because of their rage and their anger. So that's why the danger, that's why this medicine and remedy is tafakkur and contemplation. What could be a remedy? Just making zikr or making this or doing that or giving this? No, you have to fix the source of the problem that is the devil within me and my nafs are, are doing something. Once I identify that and make the connection and start making the energy to come on it, then I can begin to, to fix the issue inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi it says in timeless realities that the awliya gaze at their students three times a day. Is that the jalli always jalali first then jamali all three times? Anytime they look is jalali, they don't look with jamali. 
that anytime the gaze comes it's a jalali means that <clears throat> the energy coming to crush. So when the sparking and anger is coming and a dialogue and discussion is becoming angry they're looking because it's coming like a fire. And that's again to gain the control, to breathe, to make sure that you're in wudu, to regain that, that reality. And then if you pass it then you feel good within your heart and you feel the, the jamal. So the, the jalal, the, the might has to always come first to burn and then you spread rain. So you burn the forest and then rain comes upon the forest for something new to grow. But you don't rain upon it and then send the fire. So it means the fire comes, burns all the bad and then the rain comes to wash everything away and make everything to be new again, inshaAllah. Um, Shaykh Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah What is the position of Ahlul Bayt in regards to protection from sin? Per the position of Ahlul Bayt? They're with Prophet asking people not to do it. <laughs> yeah. That uh, the, the Masumin they're, they have a immensely purified nature. So Allah's love for them dresses and bless them and also the holy companions. So they're all blessed by the proximity to their love and nearness to Sayyidina Muhammad But most important is, is our sins, not to worry about their sins. What about our sins and what we are doing that will bring about Allah's anger? So to lessen that anger is to live a life with love and muhabbat. To love uh, Prophet love the holy companions and love Ahlul Bayt by loving them and keeping respect and keeping good manners makes them to be pleased with us. We've, t we've talked many times on the reality of Imam al Hussein is salam that you, you can't get vision, spiritual vision, you can't get sainthood without Imam Ali salam signing, there's nobody who can achieve that. Unless Imam Ali Salam signs and this is, uh, this is uh, uh, written in Naqshbandiya, I mean Naqshbandiya al Aliyah Imam al-Rabbani stated that there is no wilayat without the signature of Imam Ali Salam. So all the shaykhs they build people up but the one who comes to sign is Imam Ali Salam. And there's no spiritual vision without Sayyid al-Shuhada, the master of witnessing which is Imam al Husayn as salam. So you cannot have spiritual vision, Ahlul Basira, Basira that your, your heart opens with true opening without Imam Husayn as salam signing. So with that understanding and the immensity of these stations then imagine the, the master of seeing, you don't think he knew that he was going into Karbala? If you think that you've lowered him and if he knew he took his family so now you hired him because he's, he's immensely powerful, knew all that and took the entire family, what kind of character and yaqeen and, and immense perfection is that? That brings about the greatness of the character and the station. If you know that and he know that and he did it for a mission from Allah why curse people? Why curse this person and that person as if he was uh, fooled in the middle of the desert, astaghfirullah. You're talking about huge, beyond the understanding of awliya, that he was not fooled by anyone, why lesser and lower the station of that immense reality and immense soul? So then it wasn't about going around cursing. It was about an intercession and an immense reality, follow my way of nobility, follow my way of chivalry, that your life has to be for a purpose and you must sacrifice yourself for that purpose. Not go and say, I'm the victim and curse everybody, then there's no message in that. The message of Imam Hussain is that I knew what I was doing, I stepped into what my fate was and my life was for me to sacrifice and my family and my children to sacrifice 
for the station of who we are. That's immense. And that's why the love for them is so powerful. When we love them then we understand that intercede for me. The strength that you have, the love that you have, the, the, the rewards that you've been given by Allah for the immensity and the symbol of faith, intercede for me and dress me, bless me, take away the difficulty from my family. Well then that type of character is a character based on love and good manners and that's what they want to see that did you, are you an exemplar of, of my good character? Not you love me cursing everyone, you love me screaming at everyone, but do you love me and you're an ambassador of my love and you teach people to have hope, you teach people to have good character, you teach people to love me because I will grab them. So when they hear us and they hear our love they come. As a result of coming Imam Hussain as grabs their eyes, grabs their ears, grabs their heart and all of them begin to say, oh now I have an immense love for Imam Hussain since I came to this way and came through specifically your teachings. Because through this muhabbat and love and ishq it multiplies their love. As a result we gain the nazar of Imam Hussain so much more because you become ambassadors of love and ishq and good character and they feel proud and happy that, no, no this one represents me, this one represents my love, represents what I stood for. And that's what's important is to represent who you love with the best of character. What, what could be more horrendous than to represent somebody and go out and abuse and manipulate and, and to molest and do every type of horrific thing saying, I represent this shaykh. Isn't that horrible? Horrible character? Because you're saying you represent something you love but you represent with such a horrific way, that's not a representation, that's a demonic whatever that is. But for, for them they're saying that, no, no, we, we, we stood for this nobility, represent my love. And the owner of our life is then to represent that true love to people, good character to people and to live an example that we are also trying to have good character, we're also trying to live a life of, of, of sacrifice and, and nobility and to have a noble way, chivalrous way with good and honourable character in the face of every difficulty and betrayal and everything that happens in life. Because when you love them you begin to emanate their lives, that everything begins to be a, of a treachery to you, everybody begins to be treacherous to you, everybody begins to try to put difficulty upon you. But if you're an ambassador of their love you don't go out using this uh, time to curse people. But you go out representing love and ishq and that Allah is the greatest of providers, Allah is the greatest of supporters. And so this is the, the way of this ishq and this love inshaAllah. And that's the importance of representing them with love, immense love so that they be happy with us and that their nazar be upon us and dress us, our families and our communities inshaAllah. Uh, as Alaikum Ya Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Sayyidi, what does it mean if we are being repeatedly harassed by a jinn in our sleep and see it when we wake up even though we sleep with wudu and taweez? <clears throat> it means that you're being harassed by a jinn all night long. I don't know if you are being harassed by a jinn, could be mental, could be you know many different things but if you think it's something more of a good nature then you do the practices, the energy and we have other talks on you know battles that last for a thousand years between a family and generational anger and difficulties. But to think positive that, no it's not that situation, I have my taweez, I do my zikrs, I, I watch where I go. Am I carrying and bringing things in? Because we said we're also like a bus. We go out to the mall and we bring every nefarious jinn in our being into the home. So do I wash before I, you know, when I come home, I wash, I change my clothes, do I burn my isfan, 
and take away negative energies, do I do all these practices then I do my namaz, I do my energy, I do my mur muraqabah. There should be nothing other than testing and occasional difficulties to test the student to see how strong their spiritual energy is. And then if other than that and that being is still coming after the person and are they coming after you in a nice way where they're trying to fondle you, touch you, uh, play with your feet, then that could be just the positive beings that are living in the house and don't pay attention to it. But if it's coming and attacking you then that's something different. Email help me at nurmuhammad.com inshaAllah. If you're just sensitive to energies and you feel them touching your feet or touching your shoulders when you're, you're meditating, those are just the energies of, of these beings that you become more subtle to their energy and to their frequency. InshaAllah so should be no, no problem, no concern for anyone. Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Is there similar energy attached to tones of voices like speaking very loudly or shouting? Definitely. <clears throat> That's why we were describing that uh, Prophet described Allah describes speak in a soft tone when you talk to Prophet and Prophet was teaching also the companions talk quietly and softly, slowly. This is a this is a, a way of realities that anyone whom speaks in a harsh manner is a more of a fiery nature and in an instant can turn towards a satanic fire. So these people who speech and teach with a fiery reality in an instant they can take the audience into a fiery mode and that's the danger of not controlling your energy. So you see them talk, 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 ah, ah, all of a sudden the whole audience is ah, because the whole fire came out and now they all became narani and that's not good, that's not positive and shaitan just played with their whole energy and ignited everyone. But if somebody is teaching from ruhani then they talk soft because the presence of Prophet is with them. They, they, they bring people to a state of emotion and love and ishq so that their hearts are open and the tajallis can enter into the heart. So the system is different. When they teach and, and learn through tariqahs then their shaykhs have taught them always to have the best of manners, best of character. But something is different in the schools for imams. For some reason they're taught to yell and scream and, and do everything yelling and screaming which is very dangerous and it affects the whole audience of the energy of the audience that make them very agitated and aggravated. Now you take that on top of a, a child or a youth that had a difficult growing up with an aggressive father and you lost them completely. Because now they associate yelling, screaming with a beating coming and now you're imitating that type of yelling, screaming. Most women, children all shut off. So their heart is not capturing any of the knowledge and their whole khuluq, their character is now retreating in a protective state. So then their flower is locked. So that's all in the realities that we taught that the, the heart is a satellite like a flower, very subtle. You rain too hard on it and it'll die. So it has to be gently opened up with ishq and love and softness. As a result it can begin to absorb all the tajallis and all the teachings in a beatific way inshaAllah. Uh, as alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As salaam wa rahmatullah. What should we do to protect ourselves from hello energies? Yes. The, all the practices. That's why we were teaching that is that the practices are, are the energies. That somebody says, hello, walaykum as and, and teach them best to say, peace and blessings be upon you and so to teach people, you know, that oh you can say, peace and blessings be upon you and, and different things and if you can't change those people and tell them what they're really saying then it's a matter of all the zikrs. That's why Allah has us doing our zikrs, our awrads, our salawats throughout the day, make istighfar throughout the day. Because those are all the energies that were given to us from the heavens. When you make istighfar and say, Astaghfirullah al-Azeem, what type of energy comes out that cleanses insan? That I just ask God for forgiveness and that 
begins to wash away the sin of whatever came to me knowing and unknowing and Allah's reply to your Astaghfirullah is Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem because you're asking God's forgiveness and Allah's answering you with Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem in the name of the most compassionate and most merciful. So then that light also then dresses your soul. So these zikrs are not something small, once you understand the extent of demonic side then you glorify Allah and say, SubhanAllah Ya Rabbi how much you love me and gave me these weapons and these poor people who don't know anything and they're just being showered with, with satanic energies and they have no, no, no ability to defend themselves. Then you understand when Allah says, there is no guidance except through my guidance. Means when I'm going to give you a reward you won't even know the extent of this reward until you're dead. How much I saved you, how much I dressed you, how much I loved you. And you thought all of it was small and it was insignificant or maybe not so important, Astaghfirullah. Alaykum Sayyidi Alaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi, can spirituality make blood pressure fluctuate? Yes, of course. It controls your heart. It can make you feel like you're having a heart attack. And many people who start to meditate, they say, Oh, I'm having palpitation, I went to the doctor, I went here, I went, <laughs> I went there. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. They're scared to death of dying. So as soon as they meditate, they say, Oh, I ran to a doctor, and my heart is beating fast. I say, Okay, but yeah, if you're not uh, a person that's going to get a heart attack and you're not that age, and don't worry about that. They're going to overtake the heart and the zikrs are going to contract the heart and make energies come into the heart and you just be, be patient, be calm and take yourself to, to feel a sense of peace with death. Say, Ya Rabbi I, I love you very much if this is my time to die and I'm doing zikr going to die, doing zikr then alhamdulillah I'm ready to, to be uh, brought into your Divinely Presence. Once you become at peace with that then you're, you're not sort of fearing something. You're not to fear anything, not to fear Allah not to fear the heavenly kingdom. Once you become comfortable then you begin to feel the tightness in the chest, the release upon the chest, you feel energies coming in very strong and also you can feel negative energies trying to attack you and that way you can feel the energy and begin to make your salawats to push that negative energy away inshaAllah. Uh, Sayyidi, Asalaamu Alaikum. Uh, if we're doing everything correctly, should we be feeling generally good always or is it normal to be down and depressed at times? It's uh, very normal to be down and depressed all the time. <laughs> all the time. But yeah, there's no, there's no la la ruhatu fi deen, there's, there's no ease in religion. Allah's uh, Prophet described that, you know, you'd be like holding a hot coal so that I don't think you'd be smiling holding a hot coal. It can be very depressing, <laughs> very difficult, very sad. But it, it's a different type of depression so that, you know, you have a yearning for Allah That can be very sad that you want to be in the presence, you want to feel that beautific energy again that you felt that that zikr or that meditation, it'll come and go in spurts, it can't be continuous euphoric otherwise you would stop doing anything. So we've described that many times that the state has to come and it goes and it, and it makes you to run after it, go back and do more, give more, do, a, do an event, put food out, do something and that's why the shaykh's lives we described otherwise they would just sit and do nothing and just sit in that wonderful energy but their system that the Divine has is it got to come and go, comes and goes, comes and goes so that you're inspired to do more, do more, get the attention of Prophet much more, much more, do this event, do that event, do this, do that. So it's a continuous movement and struggle otherwise everyone would be sitting on their couch and just enjoying the tajalli. So no, definitely it's going to come a little bit and go. They say there's one day of sunshine and 40 days of rain. So that you really appreciate the one day of sunshine. So there's continuous difficulty, after difficulty comes ease, after difficulty comes ease, inshaAllah. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaykum Wa Rahmatullahi Mawlana Walaykum As Salaam Wa 
Sayyidi, when alone is it more powerful to recite khafi in the heart or with the tongue? Yes, the recitation from these talks tonight, Prophet described for us also to recite in a quiet voice. So there are times in which to recite the du'as in a low voice so that it brings out the energy for any negative energies that may be around us. That's why calling the azan in a loud voice is a clearing of all negative energies within the house. The du'as, the recitations, the la ilaha these things they can require a soft voice because that energy can begin to manifest all around the home so that any negative energy can be dispelled. The khafi is like the zikrs where you want to just breathe and do your silent zikr of who or silent zikr of Allah. Those are extreme khafi and that's for energy, that's when you're meditating, connecting and you're just breathing with dhikr of who and that's for building the energy in the meditation. But the others is for cleansing of energy then you would recite with a, a low voice that you can hear that brings out that energy, the dalal kharat, the du'as if you feel like you're being attacked, something in the house is not wrong, the children are sick, you go near their bed and begin to recite, begin to recite. So that their energies are changing, the energy all around is changing. When we begin to understand the energy then we understand the entire atmosphere. When you begin to recite and you put water near your recitation, the energy of the water is changing because the water is angelic. So everything you recite upon water the angels are saying, Ameen. So when you start to recite your du'as, du'as and you have water there or in the majlis and zikrs you should have water. As soon as the zikrs start in your home put bottled water all around the TV area because the zikrs coming into the home and dressing that water. That water is a shifa and a healing and immediately you give to everybody to drink, you drink within your home and you're drinking zikr water. What did it matter if it was in the zikr that we're sitting in or the zikr in your home? So we have our water, we have our tea and you put the water all around and everything that's being recited is then dressing that, dressing that, dressing that. Then imagine the power of what you're drinking and that has to be based on the faith. If they're teaching all their incantations can destroy people, imagine all of the recitations and praisings of Allah how it can heal people, inshaAllah. Powerful, Antofiq. <laughs> you know I see you guys, right? You know you're tired, I see all of you guys <laughs> as you're seeing me. I see Haji Murtiza all the way back there taking nap. <laughs> As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Can you please tell us more about the significance of Surah Jinn for the month of Shaban? InshaAllah, maybe tomorrow night. But uh, recite Surah the Jinn, istiqam fi tariqat, the ayat al kareem that to hold firm onto the tariqah and the, the energies and the realities of the heaven, the kingdom, and the 72 and, and, and its immense blessings, inshaAllah. Allah dress us and bless us with the, the surah and the, the, the jinn reality, the understanding of unseen realities, the unseen protection in the last days and how to bring the, the oceans of malakut and the realities of malakut into our lives. That one whom studies the energy, meditates with energy and begins to become very powerful with energy and the movement of energies. And that becomes an immense protection from these difficulties that are coming upon the earth and for the protection of our family and our communities and the building of our faith inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat amma yasifoon, wa salaam ala al-mursaleen, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.